On 15th of June 2017, the American Heart Association recommended replacing saturated fat with what it terms healthier fat, which it says lowers cardiovascular disease risk as much as cholesterol-lowering statin drugs, which incidentally have all sorts of unpleasant side effects, but we can leave that one for another time. This bit of news has been widely reported all over the world, so let's have a quick look at it. Before you ask, I don't know if this is the same American Heart Association as the one that lends out its logo to promote heart healthy foods such as sugar coated breakfast cereals. According to Professor Rachel Johnson at the University of Vermont, this paper produced by the AHA, American Heart Association, reaffirms the scientific evidence that saturated fat raises LDL cholesterol what it terms a leading cause of atherosclerosis and replacing saturated fat with mono un, sorry with polyunsaturated fat reduces the incidence of cardiovascular disease atherosclerosis is the hardening and clogging of arteries that can lead to heart attacks strokes and other cardiovascular diseases the AHA claims that cardiovascular disease was lowered by about 30%, similar to the effect of cholesterol-lowering statin drugs when vegetable oil replaced saturated fat in the diet. The switch to what it terms healthier oils was also associated with lower rates of death from all causes. Frank Sachs, MD, leader of the advisory, and Professor of Cardiovascular Disease Prevention in the Department of Nutrition at the Harvard School of Public Health says that the finding doesn't mean that people prescribed statins to lower heart disease risk should give up medication, nor should they eat too much saturated fat, he says. That statin is only going to go part of the way, he said. You're going to mess up the effect of the statin if eating all, all those unhealthy foods. The AHA quotes research papers since the 1950s, finding evidence supporting the AHA's recommendation that saturated fat should make up 10% of the daily calories for healthy Americans. The tipping point that led to the advisory was a well-publicized 2014 study that concluded that the amount of dietary and saturated fat had no bearing on the risk of heart disease, said Sachs. But the study had at least one major flaw. It didn't consider what people ate in place of saturated fat. The people who were eating low saturated fats were eating a lot of junk food, carbohydrates, he said. Trading bad fat for bad carbs doesn't reduce cardiovascular disease. You wouldn't tell people, hey, reduce your sat fat and replace it with sugary soft drinks or donuts. You'd tell them to replace it with saturated oils, whole wheat bread, vegetables, nuts or beans. Sachs said. The publicity surrounding the study and others had shaped public perception about saturated fats, particularly reflecting uh, the way nutrition studies are reported by the news media, said Sachs. One of the real problems in transmitting health information is that generally people who are writing about it don't look into what's come before, he said. The media also don't pay much attention to new studies that support or extend current dietary recommendations. The overall effect has misled the public on the science of dietary fats. People are also quick to believe trends that aren't supported by science, he said. A prime example is coconut oil, widely touted for its health benefits. I just don't know who is pushing it, but it's not the scientists, Sachs said. It may be driven by manufacturers looking to profit or some country's economic dependence on coconut oil. According to the advisory, coconut oil is 82% saturated fat and the AHA claims that studies show it raises LDL, bad cholesterol, as much as butter, beef fat or palm oil. Canola oil, on the other hand, has only 7% saturated fat. All fats and oils have varying levels of saturated, monosaturated and polyunsaturated fat. One peep Sorry. One reason people may have a hard time reducing their saturated fat intake is the familiar of foods made with it, Sachs said. People also have a strong emotional connection to what they eat, according to Sachs. What you're brought up eating, what people call their comfort food, there's a lot of emotion in that. But nutrition science may not support the health of that way of eating, he said. Overall fat intake was higher when 
when early studies of saturated fats were done in the 1950s and 60s, according to the advisory. The study showed that reducing saturated fats lowered cholesterol, reduced the risk of heart disease and stroke, and in some cases lowered the risk of death from coronary heart disease. Although people are eating less saturated fats today than the 1950s, they still eat too much, Sachs said. Most restaurants today cook with unsaturated fats, but foods like beef and bacon still contain saturated fat. If you had a cheeseburger or a bacon burger, you'll get saturated fat from almost everything except the bread, Fat Sachs said. Despite its lower fat status, a white bread bun isn't particularly healthy either. He advises people to reduce saturated fats by not cooking with butter, but with canola or corn bean or soybean oil or extra virgin olive oil. Johnson said that the main source saturated fats are butter, lard, beef tallow, palm oil, palm kernel oil and coconut oil. Healthier oils, according to her, include canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, peanut oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil and walnuts. Olive oil, avocados and tree nuts such as almonds, cashews, hazelnuts, pistachios and pecans are low in saturated fats and largely composed of mon monounsaturated fats. Johnson said. Surprisingly, Sachs isn't against frying foods, even deep frying. There's nothing wrong with deep frying, as long as you deep fry in a nice, unsaturated vegetable oil, he said. Well, as for me, I'm sure that Professor Johnson, Dr. Sachs, know far more about nutrition than I do. At the end of the day, that they're, uh, they're professors, and I'm just some bloke that goes around traveling around in a motorhome who studied linguistics at university. Having said that, I would challenge them on a number of points. In the US, some 20% of all calories consumed come from canola, corn oil, or soybean oil, and look at the effect it's having. having. Where are all the fat people, for example? Dr. Sachs does, of course, point out that fast food is not healthy, and some of his suggestions, I think, are very good. However, he suggests frying in some of these oils, something which will cause trans fats, which will make them even more dangerous. As far as comfort foods are concerned, I don't really think coconut oil falls into that category, unless, of course, you come from a Pacific island. In my opinion, and I appreciate that those two know far about more than, than, than I do, but I think Grass-fed butter and beef fat are probably perfectly fine to eat. The fact that I'm a vegetarian don't eat beef fat, but uh, never mind. Uh, that's that's a minor point. I don't think it's. I I think it's probably perfectly okay. However, don't take my word for it. Why don't you go to the resource of the NCBI? The, uh, the largest resource in the world of scientific studies related to nutrition, and find out if what you can find, stick saturated fat, coconut oil, cause of heart attacks into the uh, uh, search engine. And that is it on the US National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health. See what you can find there. And I think this is a pretty unbiased source. That's my suggestion. As for me, I'm going to continue eating coconut oil uh, well, at least for the moment, if something turns up which I can believe in, then I will, of course, um, and it says it's dangerous, I'll stop. But I'm afraid the American Heart Association, with its track record so far, is not impressive. <laughs>